Welcome back. Today is the big one. We're doing the re the the gigantor the sex dungeon. Before this monumentous occasion, I've done something I haven't done in 41 years. I've shaved my mustache. And it's driving everybody crazy, including me. So, but we didn't really want to have the sex dungeon in a 70s porn star on this, so we've shaved up. Uh, don't get used to it. So, we're going to do the dungeon, and the corrector, Mr. Johnny Beaver, sitting up there, has told me not to talk so much. So, we have to go fast, but we're not going to listen to Johnny. So, what do we have for this one? First and foremost, starts with the hooks, uh, 2460s, a one aught and a two. You know what, that you can do whatever you want. It is, I always go down a size, at least, for my back hook. But on some of the big ones, like I'll do a, I do a, especially in the white ones, I do some really big white ones. Um, I'll do a two aught and a two aught, or a two aught and a one aught. That's a pretty big, big fly, but it's, you can do whatever, just I generally go down a size just to keep your tapers and stuff like that. So we're gonna have, and this, and this is another hook that's coming out. Uh, Montana Fly's got this, it's, it's identical shape and size to the 2460s, which I've tied on forever. So that's the hooks. Going to have white marabou for the tail, strung marabou. The, and, and by the way, I'm, well, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, just standard flashaboo. I, in the original ones of these, I put red in, and I still do red in, I, sometimes I'll blend the two of them, but I like three or four just kickers, just ping, you know, popped out there, just a few of them in with that, just in the red. So sometimes I'll blend them. I'm going to go, go with what you'll see mo most of the time this, today. Uh, bodies, that's another thing. Is when I first did these, I did uh, holographic silver only, and then I started doing the pearl uh, minnow body, mini, minnow belly, and now I'm, I'm I just kind of, sometimes I blend them. I don't know what I'm going to do until I get to this, until I get there. Uh, brassy, just silver brassy wire, we're going to have for hackle, that's our counter rib uh, for our hackle. There's two options here. There's a lot of options, actually. And I'm going to do the white one because we think it show up better. We can see stuff while we're doing it. But you can do schlopping or you can do strung hackle. Uh, you know, you've heard me say this on a lot of my streamers. I like to use the, I like the strung. I like it a little bit more shine. But if you like that little bit of bulk, like this one's got, uh, well, actually, this one does have strung hackle on it. You'll see them a lot of times with the schlopping. And the schlopping's just a little thicker. The feather's just slightly thicker, uh, a little more webby like that. This one's a little bit shinier. Not a huge difference. I mean, not uh, just whatever you get used to, whatever you like. I like the shine that comes with the rooster. So, uh, but most people tie with schlopping. And so that's that. Uh, let's see, rubber legs. We're going to have just the black and white rubber leg, crazy legs. Eyes, we're going to have double pupil lead. These are going to be large. Uh, red bead and then 17 pound. Hey, come back to see me. 17 pound surf line. Uh, there we go. Thank you. 17 pound surf line or 0.38 bead line, whatever you got, you know, bite wire, whatever, whatever you're used to. And so get this out of here, start this process. Oh, and lastly, uh, 100 GSP. So we're going to do the, the number two in the back hook first. <laughs> And, there's, and I'm going to go along here, and I'm going to tell you, when I get to this point, um, I, there's two, uh, on my bigger ones, like, when I get to this size, I generally, uh, and I'll get to it in a second, but you'll see me deviate from what I do with that, or that fly. Here it is. Um, when I get to, when I do my own, I, I put a, a marabou on top, and I'll, I'm going to... I'll throw one in there just so you can see what I do. I only do that when I step up above twos. When it, you know I got a two and a four hook, I don't do it. When I start stepping into the with a two and a one odd or the one odd and the two odds and stuff like that, then I start putting marabou's over the top. Uh, and I, the only reason I brought that up is because I've had a I was down on the white and a guy asked me because how come yours has got a you know that wing in there? It's just you you can do whatever you want. You can put it in or leave it out. It's got plenty of fish without it. So we're going to buy, buy, we're going to grab two because we're going to stack this tail. We're going to sort them through to find the good hackle. All right, two really clean plumes. And just like always, I'm going to 
strip the junk off of this. That's why we decided to do the white. We could see, thought you could see this really, really well. And so when I'm when I pull this when I pull this down like that, I want these to all be the same length. That's all you're trying to do right there. So just simple stuff. Make sure you're at your gouge right here, your barb. And I even brought this. This is such a see when I shave my mustache, I must have got a little bit smarter. For the first time in five years, I think I remember to bring this towel because I'm always telling people this is a wet paper towel. Do not do this with your hackle or with your marabou. Put it right there, pull it, and it's just nice and clean. And all you're doing when you do that, it's easier to work with than it's to work with this. So on this one, just like with all of our streamers, we're going to use the hook to ga ga gauge your length of your uh, marabou. And again, like I've always said, if you're going to air with with these tails air long don't but I don't want you to air I don't do not don't give yourself an excuse make it the same every time on purpose and what I'm doing now is I'm holding this stem coming up the back side I started my thread here so I had plenty of, so I could see there's no thread from here forward and so I can see that nothing can go past there and you can see that it's on one side all right so there I, I came up that side now I'm gonna work back nice even tight wraps I'm going to take my flashable, we're going to stack this. I'm going to show you a simple trick. I always, you know, you've always seen me use these tubes. And this, I, I ran out, so I grabbed one of these. If you don't want to play with this tube and you want to leave this in the package, I'm going to show you just a simple trick. Just come in here, cut that bag. I just cut a single slit right there. And you can come in and you can grab a couple of these just like that. You don't have the whole bag hanging out of there and it's not just going crazy everywhere. I'm going to take it out and put it in this tube. But it's just a simple way to, to keep it a little bit organized organized, and without having it, you know, if you, if you take it out, it starts falling out all over the place. And I'm going to end up with about, this is totally random, uh, five, six strands and then I'm going to double it over so um, got five or six strands. but. And I wet that too. I get that so it's all the same length. We're back to right where we started. I'm going to tie this in, get a pinch wrap, one, two, three wraps, just kind of loose. And then you take it from both ends, hold both ends of this stuff, and then pull it so it comes in here. So you're trying to get it about the length. I like it to be just the length and maybe just an eighth or so longer than the tail. I'm going to wrap up here three or four wraps, just enough to fold this over. So now we fold it over right back. We don't have to measure, we can just go to the other ones, put your scissors, the bottom of your scissors, cut it, everyone's the same length. <clears throat> Take your second one, down we go. So we're stripping off all this junk. If I leave that there, those are gonna be really short. They're gonna come that long. So I'm gonna strip that off. <clears throat> don't put that in your mouth, like that. <clears throat> Now we just lay this right on top. We're going to stack this one so it's right on top. We don't have to, we don't have to measure it because we can already see it. But whenever you, whenever you adjust it, hold both ends of it just so you don't go pulling it really short or something. So there's our one. We're in three wraps. And on this one, I'm going to hold it on the back side. And you can see I'm, I'm holding pressure all the way. I don't, there is no loose... In fly tying, every wrap has a purpose. There is no, oh, this is just going forward so I can have it loose. Every one is exactly the same tension. Tension, to, everything has a purpose. There's just none of these loose wraps. And so now I've got the taper on both sides. And I'm going to come back here just a little bit. Show you how to put the wire in so it never slips. Don't, don't try to conserve this wire. Use plenty of wire. Fly shops need your money. Uh, well, that's not really why. You don't. You really want to be able to work with this stuff. You see people tie in like this much, and you're trying to get up here and you get to the end, and it's just a fight. And the reason I haven't gone back to the all the way to the back is I'm going to secure this right here. I'm going to take two or three turns, and then I'm going to fold this over. And so what you're going to see is I've created a V on top of it. So this one here is going to it's going to be short, shorter than the other one. And I'm going to come back, nice smooth wraps, just keep it on the side. And I get to this one, I get to the halfway point, cut that side off. I'm just, I'm just building subtle tapers is all I'm doing. This is, that's, doesn't matter if you're doing a hair's era 
Lady Caroline full dress steelhead or Atlantic salmon fly. It's all about how you put your stuff on the hook. I mean, everything's got a purpose. You go back and we're just building a slight taper. Now this wire, which is really critical, you don't want to, you see people tied in with this little short piece and they go to, you know, work it forward and it pulls out, man, you got to go back and undo half your fly. We've wrapped it over. We've got a slight taper built all right. Slight, not huge, just enough. And now we're back to the gouge right here. Now we've got four products on. The thread's hanging exactly where it belongs, right at the beginning of the gouge. Now we're going to get this out of the way, get that wire back here. Going to grab your dubbing tool. <clears throat> now, this particular one is all pearl. I'm going to blend mine just because it's... I just do it on my own anyway. So I'm gonna blend these. So I've got the minnow belly first, and then I'm gonna take, like I said, the first ones I did, remember if you're blending them, you're doubling up your material. I grabbed what I would use for, you know, just a regular one. But as I've said many times in these things, the beauty of a dubbing brush, or dubbing a loop, I mean, or not a brush, because you've already built it, is that when you're done, you can salvage whatever you don't use. You haven't ruined it. But I don't want a ton of this silver in here, so I'm just, if you can see, it's hard to see because I have to I do it right in front of me, but I just, I kind of lay them sideways. I just kind of thatch them, you know, cross like that. And then I'm going to create that little bit of a taper. And again, we're gonna, we're gonna get this thing. It's just a little bit of a V here and we're gonna, you can adjust that when you get in there. You get, you get going along, I'll show you in a second. That's the beauty of the, of the dubbing loop, is you can adjust it as you go, you can loosen it, tighten it, go back and forth. Nice tight wraps forward. Do not go past where you started your thread. That's telling us that nothing can go past here, because we still gotta put our rubber legs on, our hackle and all that stuff, and that's why you started it back a little bit. All right, so we've got that dubbing loop preformed, just a subtle, just a little bit of taper, a little bit smaller in the top and then there, there it is at the bottom. So I'll show this when I put it in here. So I want, and you don't wax your thread by the way, don't, you, you want to be able to move this. So you can see it's just a little thinner at the top or at the bottom I mean, thicker at the top. And now you just hold that thread in your finger, it doesn't matter if it's this, this one or if you've made your own or whatever, hold it in your finger and then just give it a spin. Now. This is a little thin for me right here. And so I've already spun it, right? I want it a little bit thinner. Here's the beauty of this. It didn't, I'm gonna just pick this out just a little bit and I'm gonna spin that back. And now I've got more pick down here. Got a little thicker at the top, got a little pick that took me, if I wasn't talking, it would have taken me three, four seconds and I could have, and you can see I've established exactly what I want. It's nice and tight down there. First wrap, hold your tail, give it a pull. One, two, three, four, give it a pull. There. Now, a little variegated, there's a little bit more white in there and a little more silver there. That's fine. I don't, it's just, I'm just trying to get it to have a little bit more of that shine in there than just the regular pearl. Now I've selected two hackles. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie in right here. I selected two, one's just slightly longer, almost none, almost can't tell the difference. And by the way, if you, if you go through your, I didn't mention this when we were talking about the schlop, and you can see how much longer the hackles are. When you go through your schlop, and you will frequently find a half dozen or more of the uh, neck hackles that are shiny and not so, but tend to be bigger. Those, those if, that, if you're working with schlop, and I like to put those in the backside. Just, just the shines, you, you kind of lose a lot of the front because you start getting your deer hair and all that stuff in there, but you can really see the tail. So like with all of them, I like to keep a little bit of this fuzzy aftershaft, that fuzzy stuff like marabou in when I tie it in. Now we're gonna tie this in, and I like to leave a little bit of room. I like to make one complete turn right here before I get going. So I'm gonna come in here Got three hound dogs in here now. They're a pain in the butt. All right, we're gonna come in here. We're gonna butt this, the bottom, on the bottom of the hook. It's coming in at a right angle. We're gonna butt the thread. We're gonna come over the thread, no tension. Come from behind the hackle, go over it. 
in front of that little stem. So now we've just created a figure eight, one, two turns right here and tighten it down. Notice that that thing has not moved. Nothing has moved. I'm going to half hitch this because it's GSP and it loosens up if it doesn't stretch. So now that you can see that hackle, there's no right angles. I don't have to bend it one way and start it this way. It's in the rotation it's supposed to be. And you can see it's nice and tight. You do that figure eight and two in front of it, it tightens down simultaneously all the way around the feather and the hook, and it never, it doesn't go one way or the other. Because what we're trying to do is have the convex side, which is the shiny side. Whenever you look at a feather, there's a shiny and a dull side. The dull side is the concave side. The, the shiny side is the convex. And they're just a little bit of cup to that feather. And what ideally, while you have that shiny side or the convex side to your right, is so that it marries around the hook. So they don't stick up like a porcupine. They're supposed to lay back just like this one's doing. See how that hackle's laying back? If you tied that backwards, they would try to lay forward. And you see, I see woolly buggers in bins all the time like that. They look like prickly pears, man. They're just, they look like a dry fly. They don't look like a wet fly. So hold this up and just stroke these down just a little bit so they don't get trapped. Now I like one complete turn right there, maybe even two, you know, and now just set your hackle, try to keep my hands out of the way, set it at an angle if you're using a rotary vise. If you're not using a rotary vise, just go, just start turning it. And you can see I'm going to go back here, make nice even, you're just setting the, the angle of your hackle and that's what gives you your turns. You just set it at a, I use about a 30 degree. Now this wire, this is why that wire is so critical if you screwed up right now, if you just barely tied it in and you grabbed that stuff and you gave it a pull and it comes out, you get a hackleless fly because you're going to go back and have to redo it. So now I'm going to, I'm going to turn this over so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I brought my wire around the bottom of the hook. Johnny told me not to say, can you see that? And so I'm not going to say, Jeremy, can you see that? Because Jeremy then would say, yeah, yes, I can I see can. it. <laughs> so we're going to set that. We, we came around. I held that with my left hand. I got it with the wire. Now that's completely secured. And then we're just going to go forward the same angle. If, if you notice, I did the, the same angle on the way back as I did this way. So you set it at a 30 this way, set it at a 30 that way. You end up with about seven turns of hackle on this one, about seven turns. Now, the beauty of that is that it, it, it brings the, when you do the wire this way, and, and you can see people try to do it reverse, the wire's going the same way as your thread now. If you try to take your wire this way, I see a lot of people trying to do that. When you get here to try to tie it off, your thread tension pushes your wire backwards. So that's the way we don't have it. Now, this is where I told you that on my own, now, I would take and put another, I'm not going to do it, but just, uh, just for the sake of time, I'm not going to do it. <clears throat> uh, Johnny told me I, I went too long on these. You know how that Johnny guy is. It's a pain in my, exactly. I'm putting it on. So this is up, because if I don't show you, you can't see how I do them anyway. So I'm going to put it on, and here's how I, fled, I, I fold mine so they go about a quarter of the way down the tail. So here's my tail. When I set this hack, this upper wing, and this is a pretty big fly, and this is the size when I start doing it. All the commercial ones you see, almost all of them, are going to have no hat. This one doesn't have one in here, right? And it's a really cool way for you to, if you want to, if you, I don't have anything, I don't have any hair here to push up. Very strange. If you want to two-tone your fly, for example, you're doing a tan one or something like that, or you want to use the barred marabou, this is, you know, it gives it a really cool wing effect. And so it just kind of becomes, becomes homogenous over top of the fly when you tie it in anyway, when it's wet. So there's, that's how I would do it. So I'm just going to take that, cut that off, come in here, get you, get it. All right. So now, very quick step. Now we got the tail on there. Now I'm going to take two rubber legs. Now, one more thing I'm going to show you right here. I already pulled one end of I don't pull these off. I don't pull them all off. If you see, I already pulled the three I'm going to use in a second. Don't break these off so that you've got three separate legs. Work with the ends, is what I'm saying. Don't break these off. 
Work with them solid. It's a lot easier. They're not taking off, going crazy on you all over the place. So just like whenever, and it, the, there's lots of tutorials out there. I've done lots of them on just simple steps like this. Um, this is how you put on a pair of rubber legs, and this is how you do it on all of them. If you do this on your micro stuff too, you'll see when you're trying to make really clean legs, you'll see that dogfight. When you're trying to put little sets of legs, it kind of you, you've and it, and it, ha it holds true for like when you're tying in knotted pheasant tail legs too, and stuff that you want to stay in one direction, right? And you put it on there, and you start fighting with it, and you're pulling it. Dang it, it's not sitting. If you do this technique, they'll set every time. They'll set properly. So I did just like I did the feather. I went from, you know, over the top from right to left. So I've got one turn of thread on here. Now I'm going to come from the back side and I'm going to go up and over. I've created a figure eight. Now you can see they're sitting just, they're sitting just perfect. There's a figure eight and you, you can always see this, right? When you look over the top. When you, if it's right, if it's not quite right, you can pull it up. You'll look down, you'll see an X right on top of there. Now watch how easy, and I go one, two, I, I, I had no tension on that thread whatsoever. Now it's when I apply the tension, look right there, I pull tight, and it doesn't do, oh, I pull a little bit crazy there. I'm trying to hold it so you can see it. When I pull straight down, I have just enough tension, they sit there. Now I can go back, figure, and I'm finished, they never move, but you see how they're still setting they're splayed out middle. You can see it. They're splayed in the middle. They're not rolled over each other. Didn't, you know, you're not, it's just so much easier than trying to fight that. Now we're going to hitch that up. Bingo. Okay. I just came back from a tying seminar in Pennsylvania. My stuff's all over the place. But this is the straw trick. Everybody's seen this. It's ever watched me tie. You take a straw. I had one sitting there for a demo. Sorry, Dudley. Didn't mean to run you over. Yet another dog. Take a straw. Just cut it lengthwise. Cut it to the length you want to use to cover this up. Cut it lengthwise. This is a pretty big straw. You can get all sizes. Put it over there. Everything's clean now. We don't have to fight this the rest of this time. It's, it's just nice and clean. It's just, it's just, you know, expendable. You can throw those things away and you can get every size known. And if you tie, especially in little tiny stuff, if you're going to, like mini dungeons and stuff, when you're in there trimming, man, you don't want to cut one of those legs off. It really bothers you. So that's the rear end. I added the wing. You don't have to add the wing if you don't want to. Pardon me, coffee break. So now we're going to put on our uh, articulation wire. It's funny, when I was at this, and I want to show you just, there's no, I should measure these, but there's really no way to tell you how to do this. I want it one and a half times the length of the hook. All right, so that's, I, I don't want it twice the length. So this is, I'm going to fold this over. And I need that, and I'm going to try to build that taper like I do with everything. You got to go through the eye, around the eye, the hook. And so basically, if you go one and a half time, if you go twice, then you know you haven't shorted yourself. Grab Johnny's scissors and cut your wire. <clears throat> okay, where are we? So where'd our hook go? We're going to have. I'm going to do this before I. I'm going to grab my beads. I was telling this story when I was out in. Uh, out in uh, Pennsylvania last week, and we said, how'd you come up with the bead thing? I said, it really didn't have any, it wasn't about, we did it originally because when I tie this skirt on, which is the first ones, we used our articulations a lot longer. And it would get the skirt, which is gonna be flashaboo, uh, would get caught up in this wire. We put those on there, first of all, to do that, and then we realized it tightened it up a little bit and then, because we were used to make them pretty long, and then we just kept refining these flies, and so when, but we really, the bead was more of a, it was more of a function to keep in the uh, flash boo from getting stuck in there. So you see what I just did? I, I created a little kink. I've got these things running parallel to each other. I gave a little kink, and by the way, I just remembered, if you're using GSP, it's a good idea to hit, hit the head with glue. It's not, you know, you hear me say this all the time in videos, don't, I don't think you should use glue and I don't think you should use glue to save your fly. Do it right and you won't have to, but 
GSP is really, it's, uh, this may be the second time I've done this wrong. You know, if I was half the egomaniac Johnny says I am, <clears throat> I wouldn't show you this. You put your eyes on before you do your wire. See, he's got me all nervous. I don't have my mustache. I don't have, Johnny's yelled at me, told me I've got to go faster. I talk too much. You have to put your eyes on first because the wire's going to go over top of it. So I've got these large double, I love these new eyes. I, I just, it, it's, <laughs> you know, you hit three or four rocks, the eyes, the paint starts chipping off. But they're so cool looking. I mean, I love that. It's like the first thing we've had new in this stuff in forever. Now, before I tie these on, see, there's one that's gone. I want to, do we have the picture of the original dungeon still? I'm going to have Jeremy get you this picture. Uh, the original, I still have the picture of the, the original dungeon. And in the old day, and I'm going to do it traditional, like this one you can see, not traditional because I do mine a little different, but this has got the eyes in the middle. See where they're at? On the original dungeon, and all the ones I tied until I started doing it commercial, I tied them back here further. And that was so I could set it and do, I didn't have to stack the hair. I could spin the hair in front of those eyes. It's really hard to spin hair around lead eyes. And so you end up stacking it how we're going to do these. But if you wanted to try that, and we'll show you the picture. It's a, uh, they're set back about here. I mean, it really wouldn't hurt it. It still will jig. It'll still do what it's supposed to do. And, and for that matter, if, if you're a shallow water person, uh, you don't have to necessarily put lead eyes on this. I, I do a bunch of my own, uh, especially shallow water stuff. I mean, you run the sinking line. Uh, they're, they're pretty movie without the eyes as well, so that's up to you. But it's just a side note that if you want to try it, try tying one back here. I, I, I thicken my body up. I, I use the, the body to go around the eyes so it's kind of clean looking. Then I do two uh, spins instead of stacks. And so... Now, back to the eye. This one I'm going to do like, and, and I try to do these kind of like you'd see when you buy them. I mean, and so th that's why I, I tend to do them let, that way because we don't, I don't get to tie all these. So I put three turns of thread around that. I just let these things roll over. We're not trying to secure these eyes right now. Okay, so I do a figure eight over the bottom. I did it over the top. Now I get a figure eight. All I want it to do is not fall off. Before I go too far, I just look and make sure it's, I want them centered. Don't have them laying way off to one side. And then if you're using these as a, as a reference, look to see that you're pretty close. Make sure you've got everything is where it belongs. And you're going to get a little bit more chance to play with that in a second when you come back forward. Now we're back to this. Now forget that I did anything. So now we're going to take our wire and we're going to put this on here. <clears throat> We've got one and a half times the length of the wire of the, the body. We gave it a little pull to make that little kink in the wire. And that's just so you can hold on to it and it sits back there. Try to keep these parallel while you're working with this and putting the beads on. You know, I see, I see people do it in two steps where they put the wire on and they pull it, pull a, put the, the bead on and then put the hook. I, I don't think it's just, I, I just think this is a lot easier to do. I can see it, they're running parallel, that's all you're worried about. You put the little kink back there so they kind of sit back there. Now make sure they're pal parallel to one another. Just give it two or three turns and look at it. Do not rush through this right now. If you screw this up, and I mean all you have to do is have your wire one turn over it back here behind your thread and that wire, that as you start casting it, that wire will try to go back parallel. And so what will end up happening is this hook will ride sideways. Just don't screw this up. It's super simple. Look at it. You can see through the beads. Make sure it's where you want it, that they're running parallel. It's on my side of the hook. I tie it in on the side of the hook so I can see everything. And this is how you set the eyes, or the, the length, I mean. So I set it. I got three turns on there. And you can see the beads. And I do, I do two turn, two beads. You know, I see a lot of the bigger plastic beads, you know, whatever you're hip to, if you like it. I've been tying these for 20 years. I like them. And so I pull these beads. I hold the hook and I just pull it. See how it's going back and forth. I pull it until this. I don't want it so tight 
that it stands up. That's too tight, too much articulation. You know, there is no articulation then. Far back here, and that's what I was saying earlier about the flash, but used to get caught up in there. If you pull that to where this front bead closest to the eyes, when it touches the hook, all right, and you've still got a bead this, uh, this much, one bead of gap there, it's going to end up being perfect. And so it'll, it'll end up being just like that when it's time, when, it's, when you're casting it back and forth. If you do it much tighter than that, they just tend not to swim. And if you do it any more than that, they tend to wrap around the body. They all wrap around the body now and then, but this, if you're just right about there, it's just about perfect. I tighten that or loosen it. So now we're coming up the backside, and this is where even, even wraps. Don't, you, you should, and you, 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 everyone has a purpose. Just, they, they're supposed to mean something. You're coming forward. Now we're letting this wire wrap around the top of the hook. This is your last chance. This is where you don't screw this up. Don't end up with your eyes really four foot. Get your sample pattern. Go like this. Look and see, is it close? Is it too far forward, too far back? This is your last chance to do any manipulation with these eyes. So it, it takes seconds to do this stuff right. Set it on top. Now, come forward so both wires are on top of the hook. And before you get right to the eye, notice these things are still loose. I'm, we're not worried about these things right now. They're just, letting them, they're just hanging out there. Now we're going to put, put both wires through the eye of the hook. Now, nice tight wraps, really nice and tight wraps right to the eye. Take your both wires, put your thumbnail into those just so you just nice tight crease. And the only reason you're putting that nice, you're, you're making it really tight right there, and take a double look too. Look and see that you can get your tippet through the eye. I mean, I've seen a lot of them where, you know, get in a rush and it's like seeing people trying to get the eye cleaned out. You're not cleaning out that wire. So nice and tight. Now what we're doing, coming back as close as I can. I'm coming so you can see on the bottom of it. See, I got it really tight to the eyes right now. Now pull it, come around the back side. And there's no way for me to show you this. I'm, I'm going to try it in a second. But at first, I'm going to pull this and get one complete wrap. All right, I'm going to try to turn it over so you can see what I'm talking about. So we're trying to get one complete wrap, and I think you can see that just kind of tighten up to the hook so, it, so the threads aren't, or the wires aren't moving, okay? And now what we're going to do is we're going to go, let me get this so you're not watching that go crazy. So now what I'm going to try to do, make sure that these are in the center right now, now I'm going to go around the bottom of the hook. I'm not going around. I'm not going around the hook at all. I'm going around the eyes only, up and over and around the eyes. Give that two or three. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to turn this so you can see. When I pull that, it tightens the wire around the eyes. So I'm pulling that. So I usually, I go two or three. And what I do is I pull straight like this. And so I'm really, I'm just squeezing that wire around those eyes. Do it a couple times, give it a nice tight squeeze, boom, just like that. And if you feel the need, you can go back and you can figure eight that. You don't have to. These things are, they aren't moving. The wire's on the top, the wire's on the bottom, they're not moving. Now take, cut these wires off at your halfway point because that's helping to build our taper, All right? Back here we go, boom. So if you wanted to, Right now, if you feel the desire to do that, you can hit this with a little zappa gap. If you did that right, there is no way these eyes could move. You can't, you, you can move anything. You're not hanging on these things, you're doing chin ups and shit. I mean, you're just, it's, it, they're, but they're gonna stay. They're not gonna move. You hit it with this zappa gap, about nine times out of 10 when I do this, I end up putting this on my lap. That's a little zap right there. You've got a feather laying around. Just kind of hit the excess, just like that, so you don't wear it on your pants. <clears throat> so, there we go. Next, we're going to tie in the flashaboo. If you're a frugal tire, you would have kept that stuff that we tied in first, this, the excess, off to the side. Okay, so now, just like before, 
We're gonna take that, you wet it, just so you see that you're working with the same amount. And you can see how long it is. Now we're gonna take this, I'm gonna tie it in right on top, and I'm gonna do a pinch wrap right there. And then let it roll off to, as soon as you get that pinch wrap off, let it roll to the side. All right, two or three turns, hanging straight down at the gouge. Now take this and pull all of these at once. Just make sure you got them all. Pull it off so that, like that, off to the side. It's on the away from me side. I like those to be just a little bit longer than the eye of the hook, right? The head of the hook, right there. So it goes back in. What I do not want is this to be way back here into the into the hook. So I'll show you right about there. So just a little bit hanging back into there. And this is kind of superb. You'll see this. It just kind of flashes every once in a while. Now you can take your, hold this in your left hand, come across here, take your scissors. When you butt that, that piece you already tied in, cut it, and there it is. They're the same length. And all we're doing is wrapping a little bit of that around there. All right. If you look at these, you'll see they've got what's called a connection cover. That's, that's covering up this flash of booze. All this, because we don't want it to just be blowing up all the time. So if you take a woolly bugger marabou, or look through your woolly bugger or your marabou here, a woolly bugger marabou is a good use right here because it's too short for anything real. Or you could take, just dig through and find kind of one not so perfect, you know, super long one. Don't waste a really good one here because it's really going to get covered up anyway. And use that. Or what I do, I'm going to show you this. This hackle's kind of, you've seen, if you've seen any of my videos, you see this is what I do most of the time. All right, this is a schloppen. So we can take this, if you had a woolly bugger marabou, they're pretty thick. All right, you could take this and you could fold that over the top and you could pull it up and get cover it like that. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it, so I do my own most of the time, is I take this and I pull this off to the side and I pull one inch of that after shaft off. Pinch it in your fingers. It's gonna be the perfect distance. Get this out of the way here. So this is gonna be the perfect cover. Cut it, what happened there? Something's going crazy. Put this on the back side. Make sure, not sure what happened there. Pinch wrap. Just like we did the other one, roll it to the side, just get it so, what we're trying to do is have a, a halfway around the back side, tie it in, come to the other side of this feather, take, see, what you can see is it's, you have exact matches now. I cut, I don't have to do anything. I, I pulled one side first, I pull about an inch, and then I pull the back side of that off. And this is just a really clean cover so now I come on the other side of that, boom, nice and tight. I've got a perfect cover. They're the same length. It's not supposed to be really big and hanging out all over the place. It's just supposed to cover that up. Now, where'd my wire go? I thought I had a big piece of that left over. There it is. <clears throat> wow, that's right at the edge. I can get that to work. I don't like to, I don't like to short myself on this stuff. And so, that's plenty. So now, I'm gonna tie this wire in. I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna, it's on top and away. I just want it slightly away from me, not, but, but on the top, because I wanna get half to three quarters of a turn when I go around that to secure that feather. So now I'm gonna go back up, just watch. Look where, you're, look where this wire is that you tied in for your articulation down here, see the wires? So I take this up to that point, stop right there, turn it around, come back a few turns, cut it off right where these stems end. So now we've pretty much eliminated any hump, any bump in there. So we've got the wire tied in, repeat steps, three, four, come in here, give it a couple nice turns. You wrap that around there to tighten that down. So it's not, it's just, you'll see what I mean in a second. Now we're gonna come forward to where we want the body to end. How do you know where that is? 
you take your sample fly and you go, okay, the head's about that long, boom. You just, just, it's all you can do. You just gotta have something that tells you where to end, that was a little bit far forward. So right there, we have to get, remember we have to get legs, we have to get another wing on there, we have to tie on our collar, we have to stack, so don't, don't get it too far forward. Now, I had my dubbing mix. Now this one's about the same length, but ideally we're gonna have a little bit more bulk to this one. So I took my minnow belly, made my slight V in it, <clears throat> take a little bit of this uh, holographic ice stuff. And this is just micro flashy booze, all it is, right? It's just, it's just really thinly cut. I mean, it's not, but it's, it's, it's what it looks like. And so, and then I just, but you can see how long the hank is. They're like an inch, inch and a half long. So I just laid them across this stuff. It does, it's, it's not supposed to be super heavy. I've got that. And so what you see is it's just, they're just random. They're all over the place, but they're evenly random. They're in di different directions, but I got a little here, a little here, and I bulked this one up. Now this one's a little bit thicker than the last one because we're developing a taper. Everything's a taper in fly tying. So set that off, make sure everything's where you want it. Give it a spin. Hey, don't let go of your thread. Give it a spin, look at it. Just like before, it looks a little loose to me in the bottom. I back it off really quick. Get it there, boom, nice. Now I've got what I wanted, a little thicker at the top, a little thinner at the bottom. First turn, nice and pull, forward pull, boom, there we go. Now, just because everybody ties with these, I'm gonna tie schlopping in. Uh, I don't know what that one is, but it doesn't matter. This one's just slightly thicker, just like always. It's a little webbier though. This is, a, I, I really prefer really big neck hackles. All right, but I always leave that little bit of aftershaft down there, that fuzzy stuff at the bottom. Just, it, it, it looks sexy to me. I just think it's, it's bulking things up as it gets forward, you know. this just a little bit easier to work with. So from the bottom, kind of got, I left myself enough room to tie in left, right to left. Don't catch your, don't catch the stem right there. Okay, one, two, pull nice and tight, move forward. <clears throat> Schlopping to me is just, so webby, I just, so now I'm gonna have <clears throat> one really good turn right there. And that's what I mean by, this is more like marabou than it is hackle. So now we're gonna go back. A little shorty here. All right. Now before, with, with the regular hackle, you don't have to be as cognizant of getting this stuff all broke loose. I like this to get broke loose Nice, because they, they tend to stick together. And so before you do your counter wrap, make sure they're loose, nice and picked apart, so you don't have to go back in. If you do, you just gotta go back in and hit it with your bodkin and loosen them up. So now I'm just gonna go forward nice and quick through that stuff. Boom. You can break that. I did probably three or four turns and I go right back over top of it and I just tighten that down. Okay, you can see, well you can't because I covered that up, but if you compare these two, this is much webbier and thicker and so than the, than the strung hackle, the neck hackles. And I, I just, personally I like, I, like the, I like them to be a little shinier and not quite so thick like that. All right, so that was the one we were going to use. This is, this is a cover. I'm gonna take this, this is a really thick plume. Nice, nice full plume right here. And I'm going to, if you, if you don't have a really, if you don't find one super clean one, use two. All right, now, same as I did here, when I did the tail, when I tied that upper one in, it came back a quarter of the way. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I want this hackle to lay about a quarter of the way into the, into the back hook. I don't want it way back here, I just want it to sit we're just trying to make it look like one piece all the way back down the back, right? 
So take that, pinch wrap, nice and tight on top, left, right, right, left, done. Leave that a little bit of stump right there because it's a lot easier, just, just a little, see how that's sticking up right there? Don't cut it really tight, just get nice tight wraps right over top of that like that. Give yourself a little bench to set your legs on. If you, tight, if, you tight, cut, tight, if you cut it off tight and you try to go through, it has a tendency to slide for you. Just leave yourself a little, a little pocket to put these legs in. Now, just like before, I've got three here and I'm going to get them relatively close to centered. Okay, when we went right from right shoulder to left shoulder. So we're going over the top of these legs. Set them up, make sure they're about the same length because we're going to use pretty much the whole legs in these. So I've got one turn from right to left over the top. Now we're going to come in here behind it and do a left to right over the top. I have no tension. You look at it, you can see, get that stuff out of the way. You can see that it's got a figure eight right on top. If it's not right, this is, you can adjust this right now. You can do whatever you want. Just stretch it, set it in there. Make sure they're the right length, everything's good. You wanna move them a little bit, move them. All right, you've got two turns. You got a figure eight right over the top. One, two, no tension yet. Put it on the top, pull down. Doesn't take a lot of pressure. And simultaneously, boom, I pull down. Look at, they're perfect. They're right dead on top. They aren't, they're never gonna go anywhere. Now you can finish off that and you won't slide off, okay? Figure eight right now so we can chitter chatter. So, we are flying now. All right, get this crap out of the way. Where's Beaver? I should have a coffee man. All right, we've got that, we've got that. Now we're gonna go into deer hair. Uh, I am not going to talk about deer hair like I always do about all the kinds of what you're looking for and where your brakes are because you can't see it in white deer hair. So if, you're, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, the brakes and the hair, I always talk about that clean line up here and the distance. But on white hair, you don't have that because it's, it's white. And so, and by the way, you cannot get, everybody, I, I must get this, every time we do anything on deer hair, tomorrow I'm gonna to have a 50 emails. Can I get white Primo? You cannot get, Primo is just the size. These are 12, 13 inches long, whatever they are. And you cannot, you cannot dye hair white. It has to be white to start with. What you can do, and this is like a super score on this one because you got belly hair and, but this color, this is, I'm, uh, I'm keeping this forever, so don't try to buy this one. Uh, it shows you that you can't, this has all been bleached, right? And it turned the white hair even a little yellow but you never can get this, this color gone. And so when you want pure colors, any color that they dye, it has to start with white hair, white belly hair, rump hair. You get a jet, sometimes you get a chest piece. You, you get little pieces off the hind end, but mostly it's just belly hair. And you don't even get all of the belly hair because some of it right down the center is kind of fuzzy and bad. This is one Jeremy and I driving down the road. I saw a roadkill. I jumped out and cut this premium chunk out of it. But when they dye this stuff in all the white, they have to start with that piece of hair. That's why you can't find it in, you know, you know I, want, I want a big piece of it. I'm sick of buying these little pieces. Can't do it. So until you, unless you know, you know, you see an albino white tail, get them. No, don't do that. It's illegal. <laughs> don't do it. But this is what you get. This is, this is your, because everybody asked me about the bleach. It's not, it is, it's probably, it is not white. Bleached deer hair is not white. It's kind of this yellowy, and you know they can dye over this, and they frequently do. On the, you'll see the really solid dark colors will be dyed over, uh, like black. You can dye over hair a little bit like this. But if it's got the clean line that we always talk about, the where the guard hair is, where it's kind of light color, and then there's a dark line, you'll always see it. And so you have to work with this. So don't ask for a primo strip tomorrow. Now this piece right here is rather premium. Uh, and if, if just sidebar, this hasn't been tanned, so you, when you do this, you have to flesh it, salt it, and, and that, let it drain. That'll set your hair follicle into the hide, and then, you know, clean it off, get it as best you can. 
if you send them in, if you get them tanned, you know, that's, that's a big expense. But as long as you clean these, but it's a pretty good idea if you're one of these people that cleans these. Uh, this one's, you know, pretty dang clean, but there's a little tiny piece right there of, of uh, fat left on it. If you're in an area that has, and I don't know whether they aren't, if you have dermestid beetles, that's what they go for. They eat flesh. And the be everybody talks about moths and mothballs. No, the mothballs, moths don't eat this stuff. The rest of beetles do. And your rest of beetles probably eat mothballs too. So make sure they're clean. Not a bad idea. Just to keep them out of your $100 necks, that's what you're worried about. Your wings, all your wings, everything that has meat around it still, any tail, put it in a separate plastic bag. Problem solved. If you leave them out, once they get in here, and if you're ever in your materials, Johnny told me not to talk about this stuff. We're talking about it. If you ever want to see your materials go to rot in a hurry, if you see what looks like sawdust in something, if you've got a bag, I don't care, you know, maybe you got, especially look at your necks, really the biggest problems are wings. If you're doing traditional wing sets and you're working off mallard wings, you cannot clean all that meat out of there. Where those beetles come from, nobody knows. But when they show up, you'll see what looks like, and it's excrement, it's what it is, it's crap. They, it, it looked like sawdust. Boy, the second that happens, go to all your stuff that you don't want to get ruined and put it in a Ziploc, get it away from it, if it hasn't already been. Uh, I don't know a way to stop them. I tried Raid, that didn't work. I, I had it go through my shop one time, in my, my fly tying room, and it, I lost probably, I don't know, $4,000 worth of next wings and stuff like that. They just, and all they do is they poke little holes in the back of it and your feathers all fall out. Enough of that. Don't do that. So, what I'm looking for, this is all good hair. I'm going to do this collar. Uh, probably easier if I do it this way. I want at least an inch, inch and a half here. I want nice wrinkly hair. You can't see anything other than that. And this is all good. It should feel kind of coarse. And that'll be perfect. So, I'm going to cut a piece of this off. I just hate to even dive into this when it's so pretty. You don't get these every time. I used to do this in Michigan when I lived there. I would drive around looking for roadkill and I would jump out and I would really quick flesh out that belly patch or the two rump patches. I always wanted to meet the DOT guy, the Department of Transportation guy that found those deer with their bellies. Like, there's a psycho out here. I would, just, I would never take anything but that piece. <laughs> It's a good way to get it because it's hard to find otherwise. So we're going to put this in our left hand by the tips. We're going to spread it out like that. Oops, down lower. Spread it up. Put it in here right when you cut it. Spin it so you get a nice flare. That just allows me to get all that stuff out of there real easily. Boom. That's pretty good. That's pretty good hair for the time of year we got it. You're looking for October through November is your best hair when you're harvesting it. If you find summer killed deer, it's worthless. It's not hollow. It's not made, when the summer deer's hair is not made to hold heat, it's made to keep bugs off, and basically. So basically what I'm doing is I'm stacking this. We're going to do our collar. I want to have a nice thick collar. Uh, for this size fly, I think that's a little bit light. And so I'm going to do two of them. I thought I had plenty there. But I want a nice thick collar. Don't be afraid to stop and do, you know, just, just, it's easier to work with at one time. So this is a little fuzzy. The tips are a little, the butts are nice and thick. The tips are a little thin. And so they're just, I'm just going to have to use two. I usually, I usually try to do this in one, I'll, I'll just grab it, move it like that, if I can get it, if it's stacked pretty nice, if it's, you know, if you get it messed up like this, you know, if you move it a little bit, if you're adding to them, just drop it in the stacker again. You know, it's going to take you an extra second or two to put it back in the stacker. Another dog, and another dog. This is Border Collie world around here. We have three of them. And it's always the big, don't let the dogs bark. What are you doing, Belly? All right, so we're gonna stack, we're gonna get this so it's all the same length. You can see it right there. 
And what I'm going to end up with, let me just do something really quick before I move on. This is where you want your straw to come in because we don't want to deal with this, these legs, especially when we, uh, I'm going to show you something. I just, uh, as of late, figured this out. I'm a slow learner. If you cut these straws at an angle like that, so you cut it kind of to almost a 45, you can do it either way, and you can get it so it pockets around your materials. I was messing around and the other day, and I did that. And so one way it's on top, but if you want to see it, you turn it over, you can, you can get the V, and you can see underneath there. It just, it's a little handy. All right, back to this collar set. I have at least one completely dedicated video or YouTube clip on just setting collars. But I go through this, and, and there's several of them out there where I talk about how to do this. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this collar. And it, just look at the tips of the scissors. What we do is we tighten the thread, and it flares. We don't want to use this as part of our head. It, it's hard to work with. It goes like this. You try to fold it back, and it tries to go back where it belongs. So we're going to cut that before we go on so we don't, we don't deal with that. I'm going to take this. And, and, and by the way, if you're, if you're really good at stacking, you can get away with it a little bit, but you still fight it. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to do about a third of the body length. All right, third to a quarter, we want a really thick, really thick collar. It's a stabilizer. It's supposed to do something. It's supposed to look like fins. It's supposed to stabilize the fly. So I'm going to come in here about a third to a quarter. I'm going to transfer this, bundle it, just transfer it, and I'm going to cut that off. Nice clean cut like that. So now we're going to spin our thread to the right, and we spin that thread to the right for a reason. When we lay it, it when you put your thread up there, it'll go back like this without fighting it. If you spin it to the left, if you go the opposite, counterclockwise, it'll lay this way. All right, so spin it to the right. It's going to lay nice. I'm going to set this. We've got a hold of it. I've got, I'm going to grab the hook with my thumb and my, point, my finger. I'm going to grab a hold of the hook, and I'm going to come over here. See, I didn't have to fight that thread. I'm going to pull down. When the thread disappears, do not let it go with your fingers. Man, you've got a tight grip on that fly. You do not want that material. It's not, you don't want it to go around the hook. You want it to stay on the top half. You're going to do like a sunbeam. So you got a really good grip between your thumb and your forefinger. Pull down. As you start seeing the thread disappear, look at the, you're developing a perfect elk hair caddis. Do a second one right, identical, right over top of the first one. Pull straight down. You've never let go with your left hand. You go like this. Get it nice and tight. Come in here. If you're not sure, look at it before you go before you do it, and push down so it's halfway around the hook. All right, but never let go of that tension. Now look at this. Look at how small that little tiny muddler head or that little elk hair caddis is. That's how you do an elk hair caddis too. All right. So there you go, nice and tight. And you can go right through those hairs, and you won't hardly disrupt them. And you get a nice tight head, right? Now look underneath there. You're not. You can. You can see the pearl. The hair's halfway around the hook. You can see the pearl right there. We don't want to distort that. We want it there. It's there for a reason, right? And you you want to make your collar for a reason. You made it so it's halfway around the hook, stabilizes the fly, and looks good. And now, this is where you can use some compromised hair because we're going to stack this. We're not going to spin it. We're going to do stacks. So we're going to come in here. The first one I do, I always do the bottom one first. Just because if I screw something up, uh, I'd rather screw up the bottom. When I put my second one on, I'd rather have it disappear. But we're not going to screw either of them up. We're going to have it perfect. So we're going to take this hair. I don't need a lot on this bottom piece. This bottom piece is, all we're doing is we're covering up this connection right here. We're going to take it right here. We're going to put in, you know, about three quarters. Hair people talk in pencils. And, it's about three quarters of a pencil. You can always add to this. It's hard to take it away, but you can always add to it. So I'm going to take a relatively short piece, and this is just, we're not going to spin this, we're going to stack it. I'm going to hold it in my left hand. I'm, I'm just like I did before. I've got my thumb and my forefinger, and I'm gripping the fly so the hair can't go everywhere. I'm just letting it go around nice and tight. One turn. You don't need multiple turns. See how nicely that all flared? One good clean turn, nice and tight. 
work around the hair, don't let it migrate around on you, you're done. If you did that well, if you held on to it and everything's right, that stuff's never going anywhere. Now we're going to do the same thing on top. I'm going to use a little bit more hair here. And as, as you've heard me say many times, now I've got a full pencil. I've got a pretty good piece of hair here. As you've heard me say many times, that my heads are not as hard packed as commercial heads. These heads here, and you know, they, these heads look better. They, they're tighter, you know, there's just more hair. And when you shave them down, they just, in the bins, they look really, really good. I like mine just a little bit looser than that. I like them to absorb water. I'm just using it to build a profile and that's it. So now I'm gonna cut these, this tip hair off. Come in here just like I did before. I'm gonna go into my left hand and I'm gonna, I've bundled it so it's kind of tight. I'm gonna go right behind the eye. Try not to hook the hair, try not to hook this hair. All right, hold it with your left hand. Do, don't let it go. Pull straight down, boom. Now I've got nice and tight. You've got it, it's not going anywhere. And it's super fast. Move forward. Now you could do, you can try to, you can try to spin these in the front and the back if you want. It's really hard. It fights you when you do that. It really does. It fights you because of the eyes. And so I think it's easier personally. And that's why I said earlier, in the very beginning, if you want to set these eyes back further, you can go back and you wouldn't do, you just do two stat or two spins in front of the hook. It's, it's up to you, however you want to do it. I think, like I said, I, I my big ones, I, I still do, I still do the, uh, I set them back and I just spin them. I just, I like spinning here. Okay, again, now I've got about a half, or I mean about three quarters to a full pencil of hair. I cleaned it. I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna turn this upside down. And I'm going to grab this, and this is this gets a little tougher. I've got to, I'm going to hook my thread around the hook, and you know you, got to, you saw how I did it. I reached around the hook, and I got to pull down, and I'm trying not to capture the hairs on the other side. So look, make sure you didn't capture any hairs. Just a few's okay, but don't don't get many because then it's going to, you're going to see it. Work through that hair, get a nice, and that this is what I was saying. I got I've got one turn around it. I did catch a few right there, I don't like that. And so, but if you're careful, you can work through your hair without disrupting it. You watch those the, the superstar stackers, you know, your Coens of the world. I mean, they can do 10 of these in a row and not catch a hair. I mean, it's pretty impressive to see. You see the stuff and it's, it's pretty magnificent the way they, and it, all it is is just practice. It's nothing, there's no secret technique. It's it's just, I'm not gonna catch a hair back here. And you'll look around and you just make sure when you come over, you don't, what you're trying not to do is catch hair at an angle like that. And then it pulls it sideways. You want it all in a circle. All right, so now one more here. And I don't need much there, you can see. I've got about, about the same as I had on the bottom, about three quarters of a pencil, maybe, maybe, maybe a full pencil. So now I'm gonna catch this hair and I'm gonna pull this hair back. Get this out of your way. So, and you've worked your thread through, kind of loose. I'm trying to make sure I didn't catch hair on this side. I think I've got to put it right down, look it around, and just take a look right now. Don't, don't just say I'm done. If it's not right, you've got 10 seconds to loosen this up and go back and redo it. I didn't catch any hair in there. It's nice and clean, working around it. You can go right straight through this stuff as long as you're careful and pull and just work, just work your way through it, get back to the eye of the hook. Okay. I don't like to pack this really tight, just want to, I'm packing it just enough to get back to where I was. And for me personally, that's one of the reasons I like to, sp I can spin that hair and I'm just going around, I put my finger on the, the eye of the hook and just go forward and I know I'm not catching any hairs okay but like I said the reason I like to do the the keep the eye back a little bit is I just like to spin better and I like to stack I mean this is fun but and it's how it's really quick but I like to I like to spin it so now I'm going to come in here I've got my double-edged razor blade 
which is the one I tried to tie something with earlier that was relatively dull. Take a new one. I think it's a new one. <clears throat> so I always take the same thing. Stabilize your right hand and your left hand. Use your vice as a stabilizer. We're going to draw this. Don't hit your eyes. Do it in two steps when you got eyes. Just come in here. Nice cut all the way back. Just, we just want a nice clean cut. Right flat. Look at it. Come in here. You've already, you've got, you know your legs are missing. They're not going to get cut off. Cut a nice clean cut so you can see that body. Don't, just nice straight up and down just like that. Nice flat cut. Now we're going to come in here. We're going to bend this blade. That's the first one I do. I'm going to bend the blade. I shape it, you know, kind of how you, can't tell you how to do that. Just shape it how you like it. Kind of come up and up and in. So you start at one angle and you come back like this, right? So start up and go into your hair. <clears throat> come on. It's fighting me a little bit. Now, I've got that. See how rough that is and random it is everywhere? So now what I do, I'm going to take it out of the vise. Do this with every, I do all my deer hair the same way. So I pick this out, got a big old floppy head here, and then I come in from the back side, I'm looking over my hook, just like this, cut my angle on each side. Don't be in a race right now. Look at it. See, I've got, now I've got a wedged head, right? So come underneath, tip it upside down, and look at it and say, okay, there it is. It's even. So now you can start making your steps. You can start cleaning it up in steps as opposed to don't try to do this in one step look over it now i'm starting to get the shape that i like and you'll notice this is a more rounded head than what i'm going to end up with i like mine a little bulky there i like them more square than i see a lot of them but that's you know what that's that's your choice you you just so i come in here and i round it and i do it in little steps just keep one at a time, if you do one side, do the other. And what you're doing is you, as you look, you're looking at the center of the hook and you're just trying not to get, Jeremy said that's too low. You're trying to look at the hook right here, even on each side. So you take a little off here, take a little off here, do your rounds, just keep working. When you get it pretty close to where you want it, it's like that and it's still maybe a little bit rough now you put it back in the, now you come in here, squeeze it around, and you come back in. And now you take your blade, because you can kind of, now you can start trimming, and you can, you'll get a cleaner cut with the blade, because they'll all be the same length. And you just kind of trim it away. Do not, the more you play with this, the more you keep trimming, <laughs> you're going to end up with a bullet head. So, we're going to come in here, I'm going to take one last look at it. Okay, like to see my eyes. Got a nice big collar. Now we're gonna come in here. Get off there. Put it back in. Give me you. Straws off. Don't pull on that really hard, you can break your legs. Get both these straws off of here. If you don't use these, really, this was, these are like slurpy straws or something, they're really big. Use the smaller ones, you don't fight them quite as much. So, that head's still a little rough. I'm gonna play with that thing a little bit more. Now, <clears throat> take, your, take your rubber legs. Make sure you have some on both sides here. Get off of there. Hang them down, same length. They should be pretty close to exactly the same length right now. Just hang them down, cut them at the same length, boom. <clears throat> and then the back ones, actually these, sometimes, I, I doubt on this fly because it's pretty long. <clears throat> Stop that. I don't, I don't like them to hang past the back of the hook. I, I see, you know, I see a lot of tires do it. That's just, there is no rule. I, that's just how I like it. I don't like them to hang way back here. I like them to kind of hang as a lateral line, so they're down the side of the fly. That one wouldn't be too bad. It's about the length, so I can just cut it off. That one's fine. It's about the, about the whole length of the leg, but if you're tying a, 
a four and a two, or, or I mean a, a two and a four size hook. And I've seen them, people have them laying, hanging way back here. You know, if you like that, that's great. Uh, and to me, I want them to be a little bit less. So now I've got this thick collar, I've got the wing. Now again, you don't see that wing in the, in the commercial ties. They don't put, and I didn't either on the original ones. I just started putting it in on my bigger ones and I wasn't going to put it in these because it's not on the commercial, but on my big ones I do. And so I want, if I don't put it in, you can't see it. So you can see that it's completely optional, even on the big ones, completely optional, especially if you're using a lot of schlopping on your fly on those big ones, you're not going to see too much of it anyway. So I would now come in here and I will try to clean this thing up, make it nice and shiny and you know store butt but when i when i grab the heads on my flies they're they're still see how that's still picky i don't like them to be super hard that's just that's just how i like to do my own if you want yours really picky and really tight you can pack that stuff and again if you want to set your eyes back i think we're good there if you want to set your eyes back you can um uh, other than that that's the sex dungeon as we did it uh Early on, thing has not changed. This is still one of our top selling flies in history. Uh, it's, it's just, it's a super fishy fly. Hope that helps you out. And I hope you appreciate the fact that I shaved for the first time in 41 years just for this video. Hope that helped you out.